All right, so it looks like we are gonna have to go the other way. I don't know why my phone always does this, but it won't let me turn the video sideways. So this is what I'm gonna do. Let me put my coffee down. So we are just going to Okay, nope, it's not gonna let me. All right guys, sorry about the issues. Let me grab my coffee. Oh, it's been one thing after another this morning. So let me walk over here and give you a pan of the cup flower farm. It may not look like much from this distance, but I promise there's a lot going on. And we are going to look at the vegetable garden, the tomatoes behind the pole barn, the wildflower garden, and maybe if we have time, my flower beds. Every time, <coughs> excuse me, every time that I get up early <laughs> before the sun comes up uh, to do one of these videos, my son decides he wants to get up early also. He usually sleeps in until at least nine, and every time I don't hit that snooze button and I get up here, get up and get out here, he decides he's going to wake up early. So he is inside getting dressed right now, so he's going to be coming out here in a minute to dig in his hole that I've been letting him dig in over there. <laughs> so hopefully we don't have too many interruptions this morning. <clears throat> but I wanted to come and give you guys a tour of the cut flower garden and also give you an update on the wildflower patch and the vegetable gardens and also just kind of chat about some things that have been going on because I've not been able to post a whole lot um, this year. Um, I've had to go back to work full time until the flower farm and vegetable farm starts bringing in a little bit more of an income as I'm sure you guys know um, everything has gotten very expensive because of COVID so we are no longer able to just do it on my husband's income alone at least until we get a couple things paid off and then I will be focusing on this 100 percent so I'm trying not to make you guys dizzy but I'm also trying to let you at some flowers as I talk a little bit the zinnia in the last couple days have just exploded with blooms today is uh, Friday and last Friday well yeah it, last Friday uh, exactly a week ago in these two zinnia beds I was able to pick excuse me the coffee <laughs> I was able to pick two zinnias last Friday and now look at all of the blooms. When they finally start going, they go. I tried to do like a rainbow um, pattern like I started over here. It was supposed to be Roy and then that was G. But then right here, we have some of the mixes, um, some of the ones that I bred myself, and the unicorn zinnias from Floret. And then this was supposed to be the um, well, blue indigo violet. Those colors don't really exist in zinnias. Well, I guess violet does. Um, but I don't know what happened to the Benary's giant purple uh, zinnias. And then this was more of the Benary's giant mix down here. So my little rainbow didn't quite work out. But anyways, uh, back to what I was saying. I haven't really had time to post a whole lot because I had to go back to work full time. And then I've also been doing the farmer's markets on the weekends. And... Um, 
trying to keep up with harvesting and planting, um, getting things together. Like, as you can see, I finally got my drip laid down. I just have a few more connections to make and then we will have the drip uh, totally done which is exciting because right now I've been spending about two hours a day watering everything over here because most of these, you know, are very recently, uh, they've very recently been transplanted. So you have to keep, you know, their, ro their roots, their roots, <laughs> their roots moist until they're established. And so it's like every day I have to come out here and water these and then um my raised beds for my vegetables the soil dries out so so very fast in those beds so it's like bone dry all the way like six inches down um every single night so i've got to water those and then right now i don't have to water the things in the hoop house but that was another thing i was having to water and then behind the pole barn here i have all of my tomatoes um and then all of my flower beds and things in containers. So it's been taking me about two hours a day to water everything. And so, oh, and then the wildflower patch up front, I've been um, having to water that every day to make sure the seeds germinate. And then I transplanted, or not transplanted, well, I transplanted some pumpkins and watermelons, and then I also seeded a lot of things. So a lot of watering. So now that two hours a day, I can spend actually getting more things done. <laughs> a lot of things got planted late this year because it was like I had to keep watering. Oh, and then the trays, the seedling trays. So hopefully that's going to help free up some time and I'll be able to post more videos for you guys. But I wanted to quickly tell you our water spigot is on that side of the house. So what my husband and I done, I seen where Laura... Um, and Aaron from Garden Answer, instead of like using a trencher and trenching the entire length that they needed the drip irrigation, they took a shovel and they basically like cut a V shape. So they cut on one side of the grass and then on the other side of the grass and they lifted it, put the hose down and then put it back. So that's what my husband and I did so that we could get the drip irrigation down here. So we got it all the way down going along the raised beds you can kind of see we went ahead and removed most of the grass right there beside the raised beds because eventually um i'd like to have that filled in with either mulch or something around the raised beds because my husband always uses his weed eater to get you know like really close to get all of the grass and weeds knocked down and he always ends up nicking something that's hanging out of my raised beds so i went ahead and removed that grass so that he can stay a little further away from him um, but it goes down to there and i have two little pieces that go up into the raised beds and then it comes over here you can kind of see right here like where we lifted it up it's turned a little yellow but I'm thinking it'll recover just fine. And then it comes here. We've got one that comes down the left side of the fl cut flower garden for these beds. And then one that goes over there for those beds. And I did change the cut flower garden up a little bit this year. Let me back up so I can give you a wider angle view. So last year I just had the four beds on each side and then that was all still dirt because I planned on having everything, <clears throat> excuse me, I planned on having everything back more, but that sat very low and flooded really bad every time it rained. So we brought in a lot of compost to try to build it up, but it just still wasn't enough. So we ended up raking all the compost way back here and made the cut flower farm area over here but then i realized i wanted more space and so we went ahead and uh this year finally was able to prep that area like legit prep it and 
put down landscape fabric and we are going to have two more beds on each side now the reason i have this walkway so wide is because my husband bought me a greenhouse and that's going to sit right there i cannot wait until he gets that built so in the spring instead of having to bring all of my seedlings out every morning bring them in in a couple hours take them back out bring them back in in a couple hours i can just bring them out here to the greenhouse and let them harden off a couple of days in there and then bring them out like into the elements all the wind and all that and let them harden off a couple more days and i don't have to just keep bringing them in and out in and out because i'm sure if you're a gardener you know that that kills your back <laughs> and it's very time consuming all right so let's get on to going over exactly what i'm growing this year now i do still have a few things still in seedling trays and i have a few things that i'm not planning to seed start until later for you know growing later in the season um, but for the most part most everything is planted and the only other things the main things that you won't see here today is the sunflowers. I've been so busy uh, prepping the bed because um, one thing that got me behind also is I made my paths wider because last year I could barely get in the path to actually cut flowers. Like if I barely had to like bend down and reach to the center of the bed, then my backside was like breaking everything behind me. So I made my paths about two and a half foot wide instead of the like 18 inches that they were. So we lifted all the landscape fabric and moved it over so that my paths were a little wider. But back to the beautiful flowers. I've got Madame Butterfly Mix in this first little section. And then I have some different uh, varieties I have legend and cool mix snapdragons and then I had a lot of issues with these in this section um, I think that they got root rot here's one here actually they started to wilt as if they like needed water but they didn't need water so I think they're actually staying too wet um, because this is my third year doing the cut flower farm. Um, the first year we like heavily amended with compost because I built this no dig by putting cardboard down and then putting several inches of compost. And I think what happened is the compost is like fully broken down and it's very fine. Like this is from the seed starting mix from the transplant. But if I dig down a little bit deeper, like it's super, super fine. And then I have clay soil underneath that. So I'm thinking that the water is just kind of like not soaking into that clay soil very well. And it's just kind of like sitting on the surface in that, um, you know, fine compost. And because it, it is staying um, really moist in these first two beds so not sure what I'm gonna do about that but I think that's what happened and then this is uh, Potomac pink and Potomac lavender snapdragons that I didn't get transplanted until a little bit later these were all supposed to be transplanted at the same time so that I would have a succession of blooms without having to actually succession plant because they all have a little bit different uh, bloom time but I would come out here and I would have like 10 minutes before work to like throw a couple plants in so I would you know get a couple of little rows planted and then another couple of rows planted the next day and so on so that's why you kind of see there's like a <laughs> a gradual decline so if there's anyone out there that feels like you have no time to get things done in the garden. That's how I planted everything in here. So if I can do it, 
you can do it. I know that it sucks because it feels like by the time you get your shovel and your plants and everything, you know, brought out to the garden, it's like you, you don't have any time to plant anything. You got to pack it all back up and get to work. I'm working second shift right now. So I get up with my son and then, you know, do the mom things, feed the animals, and then it's like time to go to work. But if I can do it with throwing a couple plants in each day, then you can do it. But next here we have this beautiful bed of Lizzie and this. This year I'm growing a couple new varieties. I have the Rosita 3 and then what was the other one? ABC. And then the ones that I usually grow are Echo, Arena, and the Voyage 2 series. The Voyage 2 are really large, like roughly blooms. I really, really love those. Um, but I like to try new varieties every year. They all bloom at a little bit later times because there's groups one through four, just like with the Snapdragons. So some of these will bloom you know before the others and interestingly the voyage also the voyage um were the second uh ones that i seeded in the seed trays and they were larger than all the other groups uh that i'd started like before like they were like double the size all right so let's get back in here and you'll also notice a lot of volunteer things that have seeded their self around i've been trying to uh, keep everything out of the uh, border out of the fence because everything wants to just kind of like grow in there <clears throat> excuse me and also another thing um that has taken up a lot of my time is the weeding i don't know what it is i do not allow anything to go to seed and the weeds even now with my third year the weeds are just Hold on one second, I'm sorry. Where's what? A shovel? Oh, I got them all in here. Go over there by my thing and you can have them. No, you got to go in right here, bud. Um, but yeah, I don't let anything go to seed. And I don't know if it's the birds dropping it or if it's seeds that are just still in the compost that I bought or they're just, you know, we're in the ground and they're still growing up through. But on year three, I'm still getting all of these weeds coming up. And like, I'll start at one end, go to the next. And, you know, after a couple of days of getting the whole bed weeded, I come back and the other end is full of weeds again. Right, right there by my green chair bub, over here in this first row by those flowers sorry about that but let me get in here and we will talk about the next couple beds thank you mom you're welcome bubba oh he took the green shovel from you All right, in this next row, we have a lot of different things. And I cannot believe the growth on these. If this wasn't alive, I would pop a picture up of when I transplanted these, like not even like four weeks ago. But in this first row, I have cocoa gold marigolds. I have snow on the mountain euphorbia. I was scared to grow this for a long time because Nicole at Flower hill farm talked about how the sap like when you cut these there's a sap that can be very like um like it can give you a rash or be like irritating or whatever um people can be like highly allergic to it um so i didn't grow this for a very long time but it was just so beautiful i was like i'm gonna at least try it in my flower beds and i tried it in my flower beds and I just fell in love with it so much. I was like, I have to grow it for bouquets. I have a shorts video actually, where I have a bouquet with this in it. And it's one of my favorite bouquets I've ever made. Um, so what I do, anytime I use this, I just let people know. Um, usually it's not necessary to like recut stems every couple days, like when you freshen up the water. Um, 
unless you let them dry out or like the vase totally empties out it's really not necessary or if you let it get like super super dirty then the stems may get kind of clogged but it's usually not necessary to recut the stems and really that's the only time that they would need to worry about like that sap touching them and maybe having a reaction but i always just let them know hey if you are one of those that recut the stems you know this is in your bouquet and blah 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 <laughs> and then next we have some different varieties of cosmos i have cairo i think is how you say it cosmos k-i-i-r-o it's like a yellow variety yellow and white variety and then i have uh, cupcakes blush uh, capriola i think is how you pronounce it it's a actually i think this is it um these are very small i actually need to pinch these off um it's a pink like this with a uh like a very dark pink not throat but like in the center behind the little pollen section and these usually get much larger once they become more established and they are my favorite cosmos well the next one um no that's seashells there's another variety oh it was right here after the cairo um volet and it's a more like burgundy reddish pink and it's like kind of striped and that i think is my favorite even though i'm not a big red person that i think is my favorite and then this is second and then next we have the let's see what is this i think these are the giant poppy pods i didn't have great germination on some of these and then some of these i'm just trying out so i didn't just i just didn't grow a ton of them um, but these are the giant poppy pods i believe and then this is the lacy blue dediscus what bubba yeah that's fun that's fun and then this let's see let me see if i can find my tag the status leaves are swallowing this one here i don't see a tag it may be on the other side i'm wanting to say it's the pink chinese forget me not but i'm not positive and then i have about oh and then i have about 20 status right here i have the johnny's um pastel status mix i believe and then i'm not sure the other variety i'm drawing a blank i'm getting a little distracted by the kids and then in the next bed over here i just have these two tiny rows of grass fillers that i was able to throw in the ground one day uh, this first one is frosted explosion grass and then the next one is quack uh, greater quacking grass and it has these beautiful like seed pods Bubba I, I need you to be quiet while I do this video it was an accident Bubba you're making a mess with that pick that up and then if we come over here I have another succession of the snow on the mountain euphorbia and then a patch of different varieties of celosia i guess i won't go over every single variety of everything because that would make this video entirely too long <laughs> um next i have sahara rebecca goldilocks rebecca and oh this is where i seeded some rebecca because i didn't have great uh well i had good germination but they just seemed to not grow in the seed trays i don't know if something was wrong with the mix that i used this last time but the alyssum the rebecca the coleus and a couple other things just 
I mean, they just sat in their seed tray for like two months and they were still only like, like that big. But now that I've got them out here, they're actually growing really nicely. Um, but I went ahead and direct sowed some because some of them were so small that when I transplanted them, they just like dried out um, really quickly and died. And then Adrotum, I love, love, love Adrotum and Rebecca for that like secondary flower. Um, like, you know, your flower that's like a little bit smaller than your focal flower. Love, love, love those two. As well as status. And then next I have some basil that I direct sowed. Some sweet william and blue better salvia. The sweet william, I usually seed start that. Um, but to be honest, this time of year I'm so busy out here that I forget to go in and like make sure that the trays are moist and so I'm trying to see how it does if I just try direct sowing it um, because I didn't start any this spring I don't know what I was thinking and then blue better salvia um, I let the trays dry out too much and they all died so that is what is in that row let me try to go slow for you guys and then in this bed, uh, this bed, the only thing that was, that is usually here um, all year round is my yarrow and my lemon mint or lemon balm. Um, it was, it used to be a little thing of yarrow right there and then lemon balm right here. Um, but I've had yarrow come up and lemon balm come up like here and like in all the other beds also. So I went ahead and... Um, I didn't have landscape fabric around this so before it started growing this spring I put another thing of landscape fabric down and I just kind of cut a square because these things spread so much um, like you will start with like a little plug this big and then it will be like a huge mat of yarrow <laughs> in no time and it, like if you look around the borders of the cut flower form like I have lemon balm just like popping up everywhere <laughs> so if you plant either of these just know well the yarrow doesn't really self seed it just spreads the lemon balm self seeds so I have like seeds that are um, you know just like flying around the property and they're popping up everywhere and then um, and these are also the like the first two signs of green in the spring every year it's the first things that starts growing but anyways um what i was saying is they will spread and kind of take over so wherever you plant them you might want to just keep that in mind the lemon balm i actually cut a big section of the lemon balm out and put it in a container on my porch um because I just like had so much of it spreading and some people say that it helps keep mosquitoes away so that's why I put it on my porch and then here I have four more yarrows of the pastel blend and right now I have them in holes that I burned but this winter what I will probably do is make the holes a lot bigger um, instead of doing like the big square cutout um, and having a lot of weeds, I will just like slowly make the holes bigger as they get bigger. And next I have a rhingium. And then I have a few eucalyptus. I have the uh, baby blue eucalyptus and then the lemon scented gum eucalyptus. This has a little bit of a scent, but this one, the lemon scented gum, I like anything lemon scented and that smells so, so good. It kind of has that um, like bug spray scent to it, but oh, I just love it. And then next we have four dahlias. I have Cornell, Cornell bronze. 
dot com. Oh yeah, and then white netty. I also have some of my dahlias in some of my containers that I'll show you in a minute. And then I put a bunch of them in the uh, wildflower patch. Bailey, will you please share with him so that I can get this video done? Okay, he's going to share it with you. He's going to share it with you. Go over there. Yeah. And then again, here's another look at the zinnias. Oh, and I meant to explain earlier. I made the zinnia row a little bit shorter than the other six because the greenhouse is going to, sorry, let me put my coffee down. The greenhouse is going to, I think that rock actually got moved, but the greenhouse is going to come to about right here. What, Bubba? Bailey, please give it to him now, please. Let him have a turn with it, please. Hold on, Bubba. Give me one second to finish this video and I will, I will make him give you a turn. Bailey, I need you to give it to him now. Thank you. I think this rock got moved, but the greenhouse, I believe, is going to actually come to, like, a, around here. So, I didn't want this bed to come all the way out to here and then to have, like, a really skinny, you know, walkway right there because I know the zinnias are going to come out, like, a lot more than they're currently planted. And I need to get some more staples because that landscape fabric has come up. But in these two patches... Um, I, I planned on actually making it one big square in both of these and I, I grew a bunch of mahogany splendor hibiscus and I was going to plant a big square of it on each side of the greenhouse and then have, um, have like, like a, a little, um, kind of like walkway on one side, like a hidden walkway in between the mahogany splendor hibiscus and the greenhouse for like my son to like have like a little secret area in there for him and to just like play or I don't know, maybe if he wanted to grow a couple things. All right, let me grab my coffee. Sorry for that big spin that probably made you dizzy. But let me grab my coffee and then we will take a look at the vegetable garden really quick and then I think I'm gonna go ahead and show you the wildflower patch and I think we'll save the rest for later <laughs> because the kids are starting to argue so here are the flo the floor the four vegetable beds I planned to I plan to eventually have eight and as you can tell I did not clean before this video I have hoses everywhere I have drip tape <laughs> don't ask me why that's out here and kids toys everywhere but this is what it looks like on a daily basis I'm not a fan of those make it pretty just for YouTube and Instagram because I feel like then it makes people think like less of themselves whenever all they see is perfect and then they look at you know, their house with toys everywhere or, you know, something like that laying everywhere. It's just not practical. So, I've got tomato plants that I pulled out of my <laughs> beds. But anyways, I plan on having eight eventually, but it's taken me forever to get my husband to finally build these, these next two. <laughs> so maybe in about five years, I'll have the other four. Really, it's something that I could do, but in this first bed, we have potatoes, and my four-year-old and I are having a contest. We planted these potatoes here about a month earlier before we planted the ones on this side. These I grew last year. They're the 
Red Norlin, I believe. And then these in Kennebec. And these are the... What happened, Bubba? He got your finger. Come here, Bubba. Let me see. Did he accidentally get your finger? What happened, Bailey? I was turning around and I kept turning down in the hole down. But I was trying to make it deeper and, and I guess he like stuck his hand under there and I accidentally like. Oh, with the shovel. Give me this. All right, guys, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this live here because I need to go tend to him and I will do I will start up another live here in a moment.